We just need some encouragement. So that's 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 my assignment for the next few weeks to be encouraged. So grab your Bibles, turn to the book of Psalms. Psalms the forty second chapter. Psalms forty two. Psalms 42. We're gonna, we're gonna stay. And if you have, we're gonna stand with Miss Yvonne. She, she got all kinds of excitement and energy. When you have it, stand to your feet. At home, if you have it, stand to your feet. Psalms, the 42nd chapter. Psalms 42. If you're able to stand, if you're able to stand, stand. Psalms 42. Listen to what it says. For the choir director, a masculine of the sons of Korah. Now Korah and his sons were Levites. And they were the Levites who would go into the temple and sing praises unto God. So when it talks about a masculine, we're not exactly sure what that word means. Some things it means instructions, but we don't have a real good understanding of what it means. But if you understand the Psalms, Psalms are merely Psalms. Poetry set to music. And so if we take ourselves back to the Old Testament days, they would sing these Psalms. And we read them and we get happy and we get encouraged. We realize these to encourage ourselves. But they would actually sing the Psalms. So a Korah would be like a Travis Green, a William McDonald. Anybody such as that, that's all they're doing right here, yeah. right? So keep that in mind. This is a song that has been sung in the temple. Look at what he says, verse number one. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember, and I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go along with the throne and lead them in procession to the house of God, with the voice of joy and thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you in despair, O oh, my soul? And as I was reading this, I, I took a page out of what we've been learning on Wednesday night. And every time I saw the word soul, I highlighted it in brown. Every time I saw soul, I, I highlighted it in brown. And you would do that as you look at this and you see that, where that term soul, and O oh, my soul, pops up numerous occasions. Look at what he says, verse 5. And why have you become disturbed? within me. Hope, I put that in green, hope in God. For I shall again praise him for the help of his presence. Oh my God, my soul is in despair within me. Therefore I remember you from the land of the Jordan and the peaks of Hermon, from Mount Mazar, deep calls to deep. At the sound of your waterfalls, all your breakers and your waves have rolled over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and his song will be with me in the night. A prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God, my rock, why, this is what he's saying, why have you forgotten me. Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As a shattering of my bones, my adversaries revile me. While they say to me all day long, listen to what they're saying, where is your God? Why are you in despair? Look who he's talking to. Oh my soul. And why have you become disturbed 
within me. Hope in God. Great is your faithfulness towards me. For I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. I just want to talk to you this morning about encouraging yourself. Encourage yourself. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Encourage yourself. Discouraged. Angry. Frustrated. Feeling hopeless. Uninterested. Not engaged, fatigued, drained, anxious, irritable, fed up, moody, disappointed, disgusted. These are some of the terms that would describe some of us. But for the last six months, we have been dealing with this COVID-19 situation. And it has turned our lives upside down. We all are in this quarantine. And we can't go where we want to go. When we want to go there, yeah. how we want to go, we got we got to put these masks on yeah. to go to places where we want to go. And then when we get there, we have to be extra careful. Watch what we touch. Yeah. Watch who we interact with, so we don't bring home anything to our loved ones. Yeah. A lot of us are working from home. And as we're working from home, our lives have changed. And the way in which we interact with our teammates have changed. Added a different level of stress to the way in which we do our jobs. But there's others of us who have been furloughed. They cut our salary, but kept us full time. There's others who have been laid off. There's others who have applied for that PPE, yes. but did not get it. Yes. Then there's others who didn't qualify for the unemployment. Yes. Then there's some people who are just trying to struggle, trying to put food on the table, yes. clothes on their back. Yes. Because their job situation keeps changing on a daily basis. Yes. There's some of us who are doing this virtual learning thing. Yes. And the thoughts, the way in which we thought our school year was going to start, just didn't happen that way. And now we're sitting in front of a computer on a daily basis, eight hours a day, as a teacher tries to instruct us. And the teacher is doing the best thing that he or she can do to provide us with some instruction. And we are doing the best thing that we can do to receive instruction via this new tool. But sometimes it's just not working. Yes. So we're getting yes. frustrated. Yes. Disappointed, Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. Upset. How many parents out there, you, your, your job titles, your job roles have changed? How many parents, not, not only are you the parent, breadwinner, you know, yeah. taking care of the house, taking care, make sure you got clothes and all that good stuff, but now you are a teacher's aide. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now you are tech support. Yeah. Mama, I can't get online. Oh, God. Hit this button. Try this. Turn it on. Restart it. Disconnect the router. Put the router back together. Yes, yes. 
all of these adjustments that we're having to make in the midst of this COVID-19 situation. Now, some of us, Miss Yvonne, this was supposed to be a milestone year. Yeah. Some of us were going to graduate from elementary school, yeah. middle school, high school, college. Yeah. Some of us had milestone birthdays. Yeah. Some of us had milestone anniversaries, and we had big plans to celebrate all of these various different events. Yeah. Some of us had big trips that we were going to be going on, and all of that stuff was either delayed, canceled. Some of us had plans to get married, and all that stuff was put off, delayed, changed up, altered. All the different things that we had planned. Yes. Right, yes, Miss Yvonne, we ain't even started talking about. The thing that's affecting us the most. And that's the fact that some of us have been infected with the disease. Some of us have caught the disease yes. and it's affected our respiratory system. We made it beyond it. Yes. It didn't take us out of here, but we still have these lingering effects in our body. Amen. Amen. Some of us have known loved ones who are no longer with us as a result of COVID-19. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. And now as we begin to look at life and we begin to look at situations, yes. it's just somewhat frustrating for a while. Disappointing. Mm -hmm. And if the truth be told, we're asking the question, where is God? Amen. I mean, can we have a real conversation in here? I've talked to God. I've asked God, God, when will you show up on this scene? Yes. My loved one has COVID-19. We need you to step in. Yes. I, I've lost my job as a result of this. When are you going to step in? They cut my salary as a result of this. When are you going to step in? Some of us are asking the question, God, where are you? Why haven't you totally evaporated this thing? Yes. We keep calling on your name, yes. but we're not seeing any changes. Amen. Where are you, God? And that's the same question that the psalmist is asking. Yeah. He's saying, God, where are you? The psalmist Michelle is going through his own personal situation. Yeah. He has this issue going on, and we're not exactly sure what it is. He doesn't specify it. But there are some who believe that this is David running from Absalom. But there are others who believe that this is the children of Israel in exile, yearning to come back home that they can worship in the temple. And then there are others who believe this is a future state, that this is some apocalyptic style stuff that we're reading right here. Whatever you believe, the person who wrote this psalm is going through some stuff. They're going through some trials and tribulations. They're going through some issues, and they are struggling. Amen. So they call upon the Lord. Amen. They call on God's name. Yeah. And now they're trying to figure out what in the world is going on. Yes. Let's take a look. Look at your text. Look at your text. Look at verse number one. Look at what it says. As the deer pants for the water brooks, yeah. so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? The psalmist says, my soul is thirsty. My soul is yearning for God. I've called upon God. But he has not stepped in on my scene yet. So my soul is yearning. I'm thirsting yes, yes. for him. Look at, look at another one. Look at verse number six. It says, oh my God, my soul is in despair within me. 
Therefore, I remember you from the land of the Jordan and the peaks of Hermon from Mount Mazar. He says, oh, God, my soul is in despair. I'm having these feelings of hopelessness. Look at verse number nine. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? The psalmist is going through some stuff. And it is weighing heavily on him. It is beating him down and emotionally he's stressed out. Physically, he's stressed out. Mentally, he's stressed out about the situation in which he finds himself in. Yeah. And to make matters worse, Omar, the people are mocking him. Where is your God? Look at what he says, verse number three. My tears have been my food day and night while they say to me all day long, where is your God? Look at verse number 10. As a shattering of my bones, my adversaries revile me while they say to me all day long, where is your God? That is one thing to be struggling on your own. It's something else that as you are struggling, people utilize it as an opportunity yes. to mock you. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. To, to take your faith and see if they can poke a hole in it. Where is your God? Yeah. You walk around here all the time talking about how great your God is and how much you love your God and how faithful your God is. Great is that faithfulness towards me. But now you find yourself in the midst of this situation. Where is your God? Yes. Yes. Can I just say this to you guys? When you find yourself in the midst of a trial, in the midst of a tribulation, in the midst of a situation, it can be a very cold and lonely place. As life is beginning to beat us up, and that trial is beating us up. And that tribulation is beating us up. And the winds and the billows begin to beat up against our boat. It can be a very cold yes. and lonely yes. situation. Right. Mentally, yes. it's stressful. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, it's stressful. Spiritually, it's stressful. We know who God is, and we know how great he is and how wonderful he is, how he is all that and a bag of chips, but in our heart, yes. in our soul, our feelings yes. are saying something. Where is your God? In my mind, I know how great he is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but where is he right now? Mm. I'm going through something right now. Yes. I feel disconnected from him right now. Yes. I need food on my table right now. My body is in pain right now. Yes, Lord. My marriage is in trouble right now. Yes, They're talking about laying me off right now. Yes, Lord. And yes, mentally, I understand who he is and what he can do. But in my heart, in my soul, I'm struggling. Yes, Lord. I want to walk by faith. Not by sight, but my soul is saying something different. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to walk around with that fake Christian smile on. <laughs> like 
everything is always all right because I am saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, fire, baptized. You know, I never have any problems. We have sold you a bag of horrible goods. Say it again. <laughs> because we get people saved and we tell them, you come to Jesus and now everything is going to be all right. That is a lie. Yes. Yeah. You come to Jesus. Yes, you get saved. Yes, there is eternal life. But that does not mean that you will not go through problems. Jesus himself said that in this world we will have trials and tribulations. But take heart. I have overcome the world. But we sell this thing, oh dog, as this you come to Jesus moment and everything's going to be all right. You're going to be rich. You'll never be sick again. You're going to have a big house. You're going to fall in love with the person who you've who you been wanting, waiting for. We sell them all that bag of goods. And we never tell them the real thing. Yes, yes. Yeah. James said, count all joy. When? When you yeah. find yourself in the midst of trials and tribulations. Yes. Peter said, hold on. He told the congregation, hold on. You're going to be persecuted. Yes. Hold on. See, that soul that lives on the inside of us, it does not have any patience. <laughs> it wants what it wants right now. Yes. And it wants to do what it wants to do right now. It wants healing now. It wants deliverance now. It wants a new job now. It wants a new house now. It wants our marriage oh. to be behold now. We're over here, uh -huh. and we're mentally and emotionally, we, we, we're saying, I know God, yes, Lord. and I know he is awesome, yes. and I know what his word says, yes. but then over here, our soul is saying, come here, yes. we're just about to go to that cross on the yes. wall, but our soul is saying, come here, yes. <laughs> did you have hey. to borrow some money from your mama last week, where yes. was your God then, yes. come here. Didn't they lay you off? Come here. Yes, Didn't you get a bad report from the doctor? Yes. Come here. And we're standing over here. We're trying to hold on. Yes, sir. And we're trying to take a stand. Yes. But it keeps pulling us. Yes. It keeps it pulling. It keeps yes. pulling us. Yes. Yes. It keeps yeah. pulling us. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Lord. That soul. Yeah. Woo. Thank you, Lord. So then. What are we to do? I think we can learn some lessons from the Psalms. Look at what he says. All right, jump back to your text. I'm going to give you five things we can do. Five things. First, let me say this. There are times in which we have to encourage ourselves. There's time to ask, our souls are pulling on us, yes. and we're dealing with this, etern this, this internal battle. Yes. You know, we have to learn how to yes. encourage <laughs> ourselves. Yeah. We call the pastor, he gives us a good word, but we still feel the same way. We call first lady, she prays for us, but we still feel the same way. We call mama, and mama said, baby, it's going to be all right. Just yeah. trust in yeah. God, but we still feel the same way. We go through with everybody else on Facebook. We listen to this word here on Facebook. Yeah. We listen to this word right here on Twitter. We listen to this yeah. word right here on Instagram. But on the inside, we still feel the same way. But there are times in which we have to encourage ourselves. Yes. There's times in which we're going to have to say, how can I take this soul that's on the inside of me and feed it with enough of the word of God? 
how can I begin to praise him and do the things necessary so I can encourage myself? The song that was this morning said, encourage yourself in the Lord. Nobody knows what I'm going through like I know what I'm going through. I need to know how to encourage myself. We can change churches, but this issue is still with us. How can I encourage myself? We can change jobs, but here comes something else later on. How can I know how to encourage myself? Late in the midst of my midnight hour, how can I learn how to encourage myself? Myself. How can I encourage myself? How? How? What the psalmist says. What the psalmist says. Number one. Number one. Number one. You go to Daniel. We read it. Number one. You gotta put your soul in check. Number one. Put your soul in check. Look at verse number five. Psalm forty-two, verse number five. Why are you in despair, O? my soul. And why have you become disturbed within me? Listen to what he says now. Hope in God. But shall I, for I shall again praise him for the help of his presence. Look at verse number 11. Why are you in despair? Once again, same question. Oh my soul. And why have you become disturbed within me? Here he goes again. Hope in God, but I shall yet praise him the help of my countenance and my God. Here's a lesson I want you to get. Listen, 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 listen. When you find yourself in that discouraging situation, you're frustrated and you're angry, sometimes you gotta tell soul, sit down. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Soul, sit down. Yes. Sit yourself down. I heard what you've been saying, yes. and you've been coming all this negative mess. And you've been trying to fill my head with all this junk. I know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to go forward towards God. You're trying to separate me from God. You're filling my head with all this stinking thinking. So sit down and shut up. You got to you know how to preach to yourself. Preach yourself happy. Listen, listen. We spent about six weeks talking about our external enemy, talking about Satan, right? And how he keeps to, seeks to devour us and destroy us in the spiritual realm. But if the truth be told, sometimes we find ourselves fighting the internal yes. enemy. Sometimes the one we need to put, put in check is ourself. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Sometimes the one that causes us the most most problems. It's us. Yes. As we look at the news and that stuff is beginning to infect our minds, we're telling ourselves all of this negative stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. As we jump on Facebook and they got all this mess and all the conspiracy theories and all that junk out there, yes. and we begin to feed our souls with that mess, and we had to put ourselves in Come check. On, we're looking out here in the world and we see things that we don't like and while we don't like them and we begin to feed ourselves this mess. Yes. And as we talked about before, what happens when we feed ourselves all this mess? It infects us and we end up with this stinking thinking. Yes. That's why I like putting on that helmet of salvation. Yes, yes. Yes. And picking up that shield of faith. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Girding my waist with the truth. Putting yeah. on the, the gospel of peace. Putting on my breastplate of righteousness. Yeah. Why? So I can put myself in check. I need something on my mind to protect yeah. my mind. Yeah. 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 With all this stuff going on in the world, Shayla, I need something to protect my mind. Yeah. Put the helmet of salvation on, and we tell thinking, thinking, sit down. That's right. Mm -hmm. So sit down. Yes. We got somewhere to go. Yes. We got some things that we're trying to do. Yeah. I see your tricks. I see what you're trying to do. You sit right here. I got some place to go. Yes. Thank you. Number one, 
put your soul in check. Yeah. Number two, pour out your soul. Yeah. Listen to what he says, verse number three. My tears, underline tears, underline tears. My tears, he knows I said he. <laughs> my tears <laughs> have been my food day and night. Yeah. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? Listen to what he says. These things I remember and I pour out my soul, my soul. My within soul. me. My soul. <laughs> but I used to go along with the throne and lead them in the procession to the house of God. Look at verse number nine. I will say to my God, uh -huh. I will say to God, sorry, my rock. Why have you forsaken me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? There's times you got to let that stuff out. Let it out. The anger, yes. the frustration, yes. the disappointments, yes, Lord. the despair. There's times we've got to let all that stuff out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm frustrated about what's going on on my job. Yes. Thank you. I'm frustrated about what's going on in my house. Yes. I'm frustrated about what's going on in school. But instead of us holding all that stuff in, there's times in which we just have to let it out. Yes, Lord. <laughs> the psalmist says, my tears have become my food. Day and he's sitting there crying yeah. day and night. Yeah. He says, I pour out my soul. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We can't walk around like these walking time bombs holding all this stuff in on the inside. Say it. Mm -hmm. Mad about everything. Frustrated about everything, yes. disappointed about everything, but I got all this in check. <laughs> I'm a man. Amen. I can handle that. But on the inside of us, we're crying like a little baby. Yes. On the inside of us, we're hurting and yes. we're, we're in pain and we're, we're frustrated. And now when people come up and start talking to us, we have this defensive mechanisms up. Because it's all that hurt and that pain on the inside of us. Yeah. Oh, we're extremely irritable, Janiah. And somebody says something small and we're ready to attack them and take their head off. Come on now. There you go, your feet. <laughs> because we got all this stuff on the inside of us. Now our feelings and our emotions are dictating to us what we do, how we do it, when we do it. Because we've got all this stuff on the inside of us. And it's warring on the inside of us. And now our soul is taking over and trying to control what we do. But there are times we got to let that stuff out. means you just cry, you cry. Yes, Lord. Yes. Get it out. Yes. There's nothing we can say. I just need to cry. <laughs> yes, Lord. There, there, there's times we got to say, I just need to call pastor. <laughs> I don't need you to fix this. I just need to get it out. Yes, can, can you put me on speaker and just let me get it out? Yes. Sometimes you got to get it out. Yeah. Honey bunch, I don't need you to fix this. I need to get this out. God, I got some pent up anger, frustration, and anxiety. Yes, yes. I need to get this stuff out. Yes, we gotta get it out. It's affecting the way I see life. And my heart is becoming extremely hard, and I'm becoming bitter. So I gotta get this stuff out. There's times we just gotta pour out our souls. Yeah. Amen. Number three, number three, number three. We must remember 
what God has already done for us. Remember what God has already done for us. Look at verse number four. These things I remember, and I pour out my soul within me. This is what he remembers. For I used to go along with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with the voice of joy and thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. And I see that, Miss Yvonne. I think about them old Baptist churches with them big old choirs. You know how the choir used to march in. That's what I see coming down the aisle, marching in. He says, I used to be a part of that. I used to march in, praising God, worshiping God, but now I feel disconnected. My soul has been pulling on me, and I don't see why there's a reason for me to get up and go to church anymore. I don't see a reason to praise him anymore. I don't see a reason to lift up my hands unto him anymore. I don't see a reason to work to read my Bible anymore. It ain't working anyway. That's what my soul keeps telling me. But if the truth be told, there's something in me that misses praising him. <laughs> there's something on the inside of me that misses giving him honor, giving him glory, going into the house. I know where I need to be, but that soul keeps pulling on me. Yes. I get another, 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 verse number six. Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh my God, yes. my soul is in despair within me. Hmm. Therefore, I remember you yes. from the land of the Jordan and the peaks of Hermon from Mount Mazar. Now, when I look at that drink, I understand that those were geographical locations. But what I think the psalmist is saying, and I can't prove it, this will be one of those things I'm going to ask God when I get there. If you didn't introduce me to the psalm, I'll say, what were you thinking when you wrote this? But in my mind, I think those are just points. In his mind, when God did something great yes. in his life. Yes. I remember what you did for me back there in Jordan. Yes. I remember what you did for me when I stayed on Vegas for a road. I remember what you did for me when I was over on Graham Street. Amen. I remember what you did for me when I stayed in Texas, Oklahoma, Amen. Germany. I remember what you did for me. And I remember how good you have been to me. Yes. And right now, my soul is trying to make me think that you are not good. But when yes. I look back over my life yes. and I begin to think things over, yes. I can truly say... I've been blessed. I have a test of morning. I know you've been good. I know you've done great things. I was there when you healed me the last time, when you delivered me the last time, when you put food on my table the last time, when money showed up in my bank account the last time. I remember. I remember. And just because my soul has a short memory, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I put my helmet of salvation on. I told my soul to sit down and shut up. Yes. And I began to remember how good God is. Speak yes. to it. Speak to it. Yes, Lord. Speak to it. Yes. I remember. <laughs> and I just want to encourage you to remember. Amen. <laughs> you know. What God has done for you, Facebook family. Mama, you know what God has done for you. Janice, you know what God has done for you. Jake, you know what God has done for you. Yes, Lord. You know. So don't let your soul tell you something different. So sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Yes, Lord. Encourage yourself. Number four, number four, number four. Yes. By faith, By faith. we must understand mm -hmm. that God is sovereign. That God is in control. Look at what he says in verse number seven. Deep calls to deep 
at the sound of your waterfalls. All your, y'all see that word, your? You see it's capitalized? When you see a capitalized pronoun in the middle of a sentence, he's talking about God. All your breakers and your waves have rolled over me. Look at what he says in verse number nine. I will say to God, who? My rock. Wasn't this the same guy who was just talking about his soul was in despair? Mm -hmm. Now he's saying, my God, yes. my rock. Yes, yes. This is what he says next. This is what he says next. Why have you for what do you mean, why have you forgotten me? He just called him his. <laughs> you see the internal battle that's going on? Yes. Look at verse number 11. Why are you in despair, O oh my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet what? Praise him. Yes. I'm not praising him right now, but in the future, yes. I'm going to praise him. Yes, Lord. Who? The help of my counter, the one who change his despair and look I have on my face. And my God. Yes, look, look, look. The psalmist understands that God is in control. And this issue that I am going through right now, these billows and these waves that are beating up against my boat right yes. now, yes. they just been showed by happenstance. Yes. But God is in control. Yes. He knew that they were going to come, and he knows what's going to happen, yes. and he knows what I can handle and what I cannot. Yes, Lord, yes. Handle. Mm -hmm. And because I trust in God, I shall not allow what I see right now with my natural eye. I should not allow this current trial and tribulation yes. to separate me from my God. Yes. Yeah. I know who is in control. That's right. And I know how much he loves me and how much he cares yes. for me. I got to read one more for you. Go back to verse number eight. Look at what he says. It says, the Lord will command his what? Loving kindness in the day. The Lord will, the one who's in charge, yes. who will let the who will allow the stuff to come over me, he is going to command his loving kindness yes. Yes. towards me. Keep reading. And his song, that H is capital, yes. God's song will be with me in the night, late in my midnight hour. Yes, Lord. Later in, when I'm at home all by myself, 3 o'clock in the morning, and the tears are beginning to run down my face, I can sing the song that God yes. put in my heart. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Amazing grace, how yes. sweet the sound, who saved the wretch like me. Yes. I once was lost, but now I'm found. But now, find yes. your song. Yes. Yes. Somehow we need to have a song on the inside of our heart. Just yes. encourage ourselves. I'm going through right some stuff right now. So I'm just gonna sing that song. Yes. Yes. You know them old yes. mothers that walk around humming yes. and humming and humming. They had a song in their yes. heart. Now they've been going through some stuff right now, yes. but that song yes, Lord. was in their hearts. Thank you, Lord. Why? They had faith. Yes. And you at the situation which they were going through right now. That was God. That's right. Yeah, no and he would never put more on them than what they can bear. That's right. But as long as they put their trust in God and they maintain their trust in God, yes. God was going to bring them through. He was going to see his loving kindness yes. towards them. Yes. So they could be encouraged. <laughs> yes, Lord. They could hold their heads up. In the midst of the storm, they can have the peace that Lady Anne was talking about this yes. morning. In the midst of this storm, because yes. they know who God is. Yes. Last one. In the midst of this storm, he seeks God. In the midst of your storm, seek God. Look at verse number one. 
As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before him? Look at verse number five. Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise him for the help of his presence. Look at verse number 11. Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him the help of my countenance and my yes. God. His soul is thirsty. Yes. And instead of going to look for something else yes. to quench the thirst, he says, I shall pursue yes. my God. Yes. Oh God. <laughs> Just like the deer is right there at the water brook. Yes. The deer that has been running from the hunter. The deer that has been running from the dogs. And how thirsty he is. Yes. And how much he yes. needs so much. My soul needs water. Just yes. Like yes. And I hear my soul saying, we need him. Yes, Lord. And not the big him, the lower him. Or we need her. Or we need some more money. Yeah. Or we need another job. Or we, or, or we need to go and do this. We need some drugs. Or we need some alcohol. Or we need to watch a Netflix movie. Or we need to jump on Facebook. We need to jump on Twitter. That's going to make us feel better. So I'm going to say, I tell my soul mm. That's right. what you really need. Amen. That's right. It's God. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you really need. God. You sit down and shut up. What we really need yeah. is to give him praise. Right. What we really need is to give him honor. Yeah. What we really need is to have faith. Yeah. What we really need is to put our trust in him. Yeah. Stop looking at things with our natural eyes. Yeah. We need to look at it with our spiritual eyes. Yeah. That's what we need. Yeah. Yes, That's good. That's there good. will come a time in which God will deliver us. This too shall pass. There will be an after this when it comes to this situation. COVID-19 will not last forever. Yes, Lord. Yes. The effects of COVID-19 will not last forever. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. So the psalmist said, I'm going to praise him. There's going to be a day I am going to praise him. As the deer pants after the water brook, so pants my soul for you, O God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can say one thing. We're going to share today. One thing. Did you notice something in this text? God does not deliver. God does not answer him. Right. And sometimes we look for the happy ending. Mm -hmm. We look for the storybook ending, the, the movie theater ending. But everything doesn't have a movie theater. There's times in which God allows us to go through some stuff to strengthen yes. us. And he leaves us in that stuff for a while. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. He gave Paul a thorn in the flesh and he pulled on to that thorn as a way to buffet him yes. or to humble yes. him. Yes. Jesus said, if you can take this cup from me, take this cup. But Jesus understood what the total mission was for me to go to the cross. Yes. Here's the lesson I want you to get. As you are in your situation, as you're stuck in your particular storm, we can't give up. 
we can't fall into a depression. Right. Can't become despondent. We can't find ourselves in despair. Right. We must learn how to encourage ourselves in the midst of the storm. Yes, yes, thank you. Think about it. The sun is out before the storm comes. The thunder warns of an impending storm. The lightning warns of an impending storm. Then the heavens open and the, and the rain begins to fall and the waves begin to come. The winds begin to blow. And while we're standing there in the storm, the natural inclination is to run into the house for shelter. Yes. Yes. But there's times in which God says you need to sit in the storm as a sit. way of you maturing and yes. growing so that you can see how good I am and how great I am and the things I have done for you. Yes. But many of us give up here in the storm yes. and we run back to the false light. Yes, Lord. Yes. <laughs> the sunlight we need is on that side. Well, we're trying to chase the sunlight from the past. Yeah. But the sunlight we need is in front of us. But we give up here and we right. want to go back there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Say it. Mm -hmm. Give up. Learn how to encourage yourself <laughs> in the storm. That's right. So that when God allows the light to we shine, yes. the light to yes. shine, yes. and when the sun begins to shine, yes. you can give the walk in it. Shake yourself yes, off yes, and keep on moving. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Yes. But we can't get bogged down <laughs> in the midst of the storm. That's right, now. Mm -hmm. Lady Ann and I went bike riding yesterday. Lord Jesus. Yep. We went over there to your area, Omar, down the creek. And as we were coming down 485, it started raining. Indeed. It was raining. Right. You say, you say, say, pass what we're going to do. Go back home. I said, no. It's going to be a quick one. And by the time we got from Huntersville to Mallet Creek, it had stopped raining. Here's the lesson. Here's the lesson. Here's the lesson. Your storm can be a quick storm if you keep it moving. That's good. That's good. If you stop and turn around, you will never get to your destination. But you can't keep giving up in the midst of the storm. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. COVID-19 is going to be here for a while. It's going to be here for a minute. Unless God performs a miracle, we're going to be in this situation yeah. for a while. Yeah. So in the midst of this, you need to learn how to encourage yes. yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. In the midst of the storm. Don't give up. Don't allow despair to overwhelm you, yes. depression to overwhelm you. Yes. Don't yes. allow your stinking thinking to overwhelm yes. you. Yes. Tell your soul, sit down. Sit down. Shut up. Yes. It's a bright side. It's, it's a bright side. Yes. Oh, yeah. and, and don't you stop. That's right. <laughs> Say the last part. Because there's a bright side. Yes. 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 